Hey everybody and welcome to another episode of Linux and Code. Today we are going to be getting started with OAuth and we're going to do that by adding the ability to log in with Twitter to our API. Let's get started. So the first thing that we're going to need to do is install a couple of extra packages. So I'm here just in the root of core and I'm going to do an npm install express session passport OAuth 1 connect mongo mongoose find or create and dash dash save for good measure let all those packages install zero vulnerabilities that's always good to see now that we've got those extra packages i'm going to go ahead and start up the service So now that that's done, the first thing that we're going to do is go over to our model and we're going to be working on our user file. So open that up and we actually are leaving most of this alone, but we're adding a few new fields. So we're going to add one called Twitter ID and that's just going to be a string and then we're going to have a new object that's also um, called Twitter. And in that Twitter object, we're gonna need a few other properties. So we're gonna make an ID, that's also gonna be a string. We're gonna make a token, that's gonna to be a string. You're going to make a display name, also a string. And finally, a username, which is also a string. We're just gonna save that. Now, we also need to add one of the plugins that we just installed. So we're going to make a new constant. We're going to call it find or create. And it's going to just equal that require mongoose find or create. And then we are going to add it as a plugin below our passport local mongoose. I'm just going to user plugin and find or create. And you could do it the same way that we did our passport local mongoose. I'm just doing it this way for now and save it. And that's all the changes that we need to make in this file. So next we're going to make a new file and that's going to be called config. And we're gonna leave it at the top level. And we're just gonna call it config.js. And this file is going to be useful because it's going to let us store things like token secrets and stuff, but we don't want to push those to our repository. So in your own repository, you'd want to add this to a git ignore or use environmental variables instead. I'm doing it this way to make it easier for me to read in in the authentication that we're going to set up. But there are other ways that you can do it and I won't be including the keys that I use in the source code. So I'm gonna make a new object and I'm just going to call it Twitter for now. And actually we're gonna call this config. It's a new object and it'll have a property Twitter and it's also an object. So what Twitter is going to have is it's going to have something called Twitter consumer key. And that's gonna be a string, but we'll just leave it empty for now. And it's also going to have something called Twitter consumer secret. And the last thing that it'll have is a callback uh, URL. And we don't know what any of that is yet, which is fine. So then we're going to do a module.exports and config. So now anything that's under this configuration will be able to access anytime we require this module. So we'll just save that, and we're gonna leave that alone for now. Now, the next thing that we're going to do is going to be over in our server file. So in this file, we're going to add some of the things that we installed with NPM. So we're going to do const session, and that's just going to be equal to that express session that we installed. And we're going to do a Mongo store, and that's going to be equal to connect Mongo. And we are going to pass that our session. We'll see why here in a little bit. And for those of you wondering why I'm using sessions for this, OAuth 1, which is what Twitter requires to log in, 
does not support not having a session. You have to have some kind of existing session to be able to request an OAuth token from them. So our existing system of just using JWT won't work for Twitter. It will work for OAuth 2, which we'll get into in another episode, but just for this one, we have to use sessions. And we're gonna create our token secret, which we've already used in a couple of other places. Um, so this shouldn't look that new. I should make sure I'm using the same secret that we used over in local. Yeah, just copy that over, paste it. Okay, so that's the new things that we needed to import. Now we have to actually use them. So right below where we do our body parser JSON, we're going to tell our app to use something else. And that's going to be our session store. Now, what this is essentially doing is enabling Express to store sessions that Passport creates in our existing Mongo database instead of keeping them all in memory. If they were all in memory, anytime you restarted your server, you would lose all of your user sessions. And your memory usage would scale with every user that you have. So putting it off to the database means Express doesn't have to constantly be building the data of your user sessions. So we need a couple of uh, things still here, but this one just requires a mongoose connection, which we already have. You can just call mongoose.connection because we already established that up here. So we have our session store, and now we need to tell our app to use it. So we'll do app.use session, and we're gonna pass it our token secret. No need for those to be any different. We're going to pass it our session store. And here's a couple of other properties that are just required as part of session. There's save uninitialized, which means if a user has visited your site, for example, but they haven't done anything to create a session, but your site still creates one for them, save uninitialized means it would still preserve that session for the user. We're going to set that to false for now. We're also going to set one other property in here called proxy. We're going to set it to true. Remember, our service is running behind an Nginx proxy and we're using it for HTTPS. So this proxy needs to be true because we aren't directly talking to our server. And that lets us do one other thing here, which is set the cookie that Passport is going to create for this session, lets us set that to secure so that it can't be used by HTTP. It can only be used by HTTPS. We're going to save that. And now we have one last thing to do. Below where we call this passport.initialize, we're now going to say app.use passport.session and just call that function like we do with initialize and save. That's all we need to do in server.js. Now, next we need to create a similar structure for Twitter that we did for our local authentication. So we're going to make a new folder. We're going to call it Twitter. And we're going to need to create a couple of files in here, uh, twitter.js and index. Js. Now these aren't being referenced anywhere yet, so we can put whatever we want in them and not worry about it breaking. So we're gonna start off with the index and we're just going to import passport. And that should look pretty familiar. We'll get our express router and our user object. And now we're just going to tell it to use anything that's in here. We're just going to point it to our Twitter module, which we haven't created yet, but it does exist. And then we're just going to do module.exports equals router. 
So that's all for now. So you're saying, why aren't we using passport or user? Well, we will, but for right now, we're just setting this file up. And then over in Twitter, we're gonna have kind of a similar thing to the point where I'm gonna copy some of this. And we do need one other thing in here though, and that is our OAuth strategy that we installed with NPM. Now this is just part of how Passport works. Um, installing different strategies lets you use different ways of authenticating. When we did local, we kind of bypassed that by using Passport Local Mongoose. We may come back and adjust that so we have a more consistent approach, but for right now, it's not gonna get in our way the way that we have it set up. So we're just going to finish importing this. Now, we need to also include that configuration that we referenced earlier. Which is just like that. And after this, it's gonna get a little messy. That's okay. So now we need to go about actually defining our Passport Twitter strategy. And you'll notice we in installed Passport OAuth instead of Passport Twitter. And the reason for that is it gives us a little bit more granular control over how things operate. You can do this with just Passport Twitter, but this is diving into more of how OAuth 1 works. So we'll expose a few more things that Passport Twitter hides by default. So first we're going to call a function called passport.use, and this is how we define our strategy for Passport to authenticate. So the first uh, parameter that this function takes is the name. We're going to call this Twitter. So anywhere that authenticate is passed with Twitter, it'll look at this and say, okay, uh, this is how I know a user is authenticated with Twitter. We're gonna have a new OAuth strategy, and that's a function and take some options. Now, this stuff that is required in here, uh, there's a few of them. There's request token URL. There is access token URL. There is user authorization URL. And there is consumer key. And you remember, we actually configured this already in our config file. So we can call config.twitter.consumer key right there. And there's also consumer secret. And so if you want to, which is what I'm going to do, you can also put this. Um, other stuff in your config file. For the sake of the video, I'll leave them directly in here since I'm not going to be showing the rest of the config file after I put the secrets in, um, but you totally can. And the last thing that we also put in that configuration file is our callback URL. Now, you may be wondering where all of this stuff came from, and you should be and it's not exactly straightforward. This actually came from the Passport Twitter module. So if you come in here and you open up the Passport Twitter and you go into the lib, there's a strategy.js file. And you'll see it's actually referencing OAuth 1 in this file. And if you come down here to where the strategy function is defined, here's where all of these URLs are coming from. So we're actually just gonna grab these out of, out of here while we're here. So we have the request token. We have the access token. We have the authenticate URL, which is the authorize URL. And that's it. The last thing we need is this callback URL, which we haven't set up yet. And you'll notice this has a few other things in here, 
but we aren't gonna get to that in this particular episode. So by default, you'll notice this is commented out in this example, and it's referring to some example domain and callback. We haven't made that yet, so we're not gonna worry about that, which is why this is in our configuration. So we're gonna save this. Now, we've really only given this passport.use two of the parameters that it requires. It requires a third one, because unfortunately, Passport does not support promises, uh, which is why we kind of strayed away from using this in the local method. We have to give it a callback function, and it takes a few parameters. It takes a token, it takes a token secret, it takes a profile, and it takes a callback function, which we are just going to call done. So inside of this is where we actually get to create our user. This is what we get to when Twitter has authenticated the user for us, the user has given our app permission, and they're redirected back to our application. This is the function that gets called. So in here, we're now going to reference our user, we're going to reference that plugin that we installed earlier. We're going to do find or create. And we're going to reference that Twitter ID that we made. Let's see what we called that. So you'll notice we have this Twitter ID in two places. We have Twitter ID here and we have Twitter.ID here. You can use either one. I'm going to reference this object and see if we can actually eliminate this property. But for right now, we're gonna leave it alone. So I'm just going to do twitter.id, and we have this in quotes because otherwise it'll break the syntax. And we're, then we're going to say that is equal to the profile.id, and that is the ID that we'll get back from Twitter. Now, again, we're inside of a callback function, but we can use promises inside of this. So, here we assume we've gotten a user, so we also need to write a catch block. So if we get an error, let's just throw uh, it back at their face, essentially. Now we have this done function, uh, which is supposed to be used for this. So in this case, we did get an error, and the way this callback function works, if it has a first parameter, that means it has an error. It's kind of a, a throwback to the old school uh, callback methods in Node. That was the convention. If there was a first parameter, it was an error. So if we get a user, though, that's success. So I'm going to return this and return this. That's going to call done. Remember, first function parameter is an error. We don't have an error, we have a user. So we're going to pass that. We may have to come back to this. It may not like us using a promise here, but we're gonna to try to do that for now. And just for kicks, we'll console.log our Twitter user. So that is our Twitter OAuth strategy. We've just defined it with this passport.use. How do we tell our router about it? We still haven't referenced anything with our router up here. Well, we'll just do that right below this. So we're gonna make a new router.get and we'll just have it be a slash and we'll say passport.authenticate and we'll reference our strategy that we defined at Twitter. Now remember, we also needed to create a callback. So we'll do that here. And this takes the same function like that, but it takes a second parameter in it. And it takes um, a couple of different options. You can either pass it this function um, as a third option and a callback, you can do it yourself. Or what we're going to do in this case is you can just pass it some options and we're going to use that to know that our authentication worked. So in this case, it has a couple of things called success redirect. We're gonna reference that and we're just gonna say Twitter success. And then it has a failure redirect. And we're going to say Twitter fail. Now, 
if this was in a normal application, you could redirect to like a dashboard or you could redirect to a login screen or in an API. So the response is more of what we care about than the actual URL. We're just going to use this as a proof of concept and we'll adjust how it works later. Save that and we'll do a module.exports router. Now the reason we can do this is because when this file is called, this passport.use is going to be fired immediately and these routes aren't going to be called until something actually goes to them. So that's how we can define this passport and not actually export it. So we've done all of this in our twitter.js file. Now let's go back up to the index. Now there's something else we need to do here as part of those sessions that we're making. We need to tell our application how to serialize that session to pass to the client and how to deserialize it for the server to read. Essentially like creating our JWT, but a little bit different. But it's gonna look pretty similar. We're gonna call passport.serialize user and we're going to say uh, user and a done function, again, passport convention, done, we aren't getting an error, user.id. So this is our user ID that we created on our user model and we're creating a session ID from that. It's essentially base64 encoding our user ID and using that with our token secret to create to a cookie and pass that to the user. That's all this function is doing. Now we need to do something that tells it how to get that back out. So now we need a deserialize user. And this takes our ID and again, a done callback. So now we're referencing that user model that we made earlier. And here we can just do find by ID, since that's all we're looking for. And again, you could do a callback function or you can do a promise. And one more time, this, because Passport doesn't support promises, it may freak out on us for this. And we may have to adjust it to use the old style callback, but we're gonna try it. So that's really all we have to do for the strategy itself. Now we can get this module included in our index file. So just like we did before with our local strategy, we'll do router.use slash Twitter and we're going to require dot slash Twitter. That's all we need to do there. Now you will notice I actually got an error here and that's because of a mistake on my part. You see it's saying OAuth strategy requires a verify callback. That means over here in our Twitter file uh, where I created this, I actually scoped it incorrectly. So this is an argument for the OAuth strategy and not for our passport.use. That's my mistake. So just that quick little adjustment and that error should go away. So that one goes away, but now we have another one. Requires consumer key option. And this is not going to go away until I add some things to my config file. I will show you where I get those from, but I'm not gonna show you the actual values. So to get config files or consumer secrets and keys, you need to go to the Twitter API. And you don't want the, the docs. I mean, you can use those, they're, they're useful. But we actually want the developer.twitter um, for the platform. And when you're here, you'll be prompted to sign in. And if you haven't already created a Twitter developer account, you'll have to go through that process. Uh, and then you'll have a chance to create an application. And then on that page, you'll have a consumer secret and a consumer key. And that's what you need to plug into that config file. So before I put these values in, you may still be wondering about this callback URL. So if you remember in our last episode, we added HTTPS for our core API, which we could see by just looking at our Etsy slash hosts. 
right? This query.api.local. We added that to our Docker Compose for HTTPS for local development. So here, our callback URL is going to be HTTPS slash slash course.api.local slash API slash auth slash Twitter slash callback. It's kind of a long URL, but this needs to be correct or you may get some errors that are kind of hard to debug with Passport. So save that. This is still throwing errors because I need to put my consumer keys in and I'm gonna go do that and we'll be right back. Okay, so I just added those two key uh, strings. I didn't do anything else and you can see now we don't have an error. Our server is running as we would expect. We can actually at this point try it out and see if it works, but we need to go to that authentication URL and see. So we can either do that with our typical request file, or we can actually just do it with a browser, which is what I'm gonna do. So open up a new tab and go to HTTPS core.api.local slash auth slash Twitter. We need an API in front of that. And this is saying we failed to serialize our user into a session. Well, that is a bummer. Let's figure out why that is. So after looking around, it looks like the serialized user can't actually handle this being done uh, with a promise here. So we're gonna remove this being a promise, which is, is kind of a bummer. Uh, and we're gonna change it to being a callback for Mongoose. So um, that's, that's nothing too bad, but it is a little disappointing because I, I really like the, the promise syntax. However, we will not be dissuaded. So I'm gonna get a user and we're going to have an error. In our little callback function. And if we have an error, then done, error. Um, if we don't, then we have that user ID. Okay, we'll try that. Okay, so after diving it into it a little bit more, uh, it is unfortunately caused by the fact that promises aren't supported anywhere inside of passport.use uh, or serialize or deserialize. So in addition to changing this to use callback functions with mongoose, we also need to change it in our twitter.js file. So where we do this dot then for the user, can't do that. So <laughs> unfortunately, um, this, this has to go, which is a bummer, uh, but I, I guess it is what it is. So we need an error uh, and a user. Um, and then we'll say if error um, return an error else, um, done, no error. And we've got syntax problem. There we go. Save that. So now let's go over and try. Um, I'll reload this URL. The API. Auth Twitter. We redirect here. Authorize. Twitter fail. Well, at least we hit one of the routes we expected. So the reason for this error is really dumb and it's, it has to do with me rewriting this function. So in this finder create, we return done, null, and this needs to be a user. So if we save that and we go back to our auth slash Twitter, Twitter success. So now we have our normal 
connect SID uh, cookie and you can see it has host only true, HTTP only true, secure true. We may want to set the same site to also be true, but we're going to leave that alone for now. And you can see it doesn't have any user data other than the encrypted ID in here. So no need to worry about it uh, exposing user data. So that's what we want. The last thing we want to do is make it so that somebody could log in um, or authenticate against our existing API with this instead of the local. And the way that we do that is just by modifying our authorizer a little bit. So just right above where this user JWT would be, we're going to include something. We're going to say if rq.user, which is created by express session earlier in the server, if it exists. If the user session doesn't exist, then this won't be a thing. And our local strategy doesn't create it until way down here. So if it exists at this point, we don't need to do any of that. We can just return next. Otherwise, we can let this fall all the way through and it'll do our normal check on a local cookie, which won't exist. So it's just this three line change to our existing authorizer. So if we look at something that was protected, which I believe was items, but we'll take a look at our requests uh, and see, yeah, we were guarding item. So let's let's comment this out actually and see if we can, we can do this first. So we have our success, which means that cookie is set. So API slash item. Oh, we're getting an error. JWT must be provided. So here we aren't catching something that we should be. And that is if a user has a cookie, but it's not one that we expect we go ahead and try to parse this authorization, but it might not exist. So we'll just add one more catch here. And we'll take a look and see where it's failing. It's on line 26. So as part of our promise, and it's on the verify right here. So we'll just, we'll try this. If not user, JWT. We want to just return unauthorized like we would anywhere else. Let's try this again. Unauthorized. Perfect. Now let's enable our new session. And there's our items. So this is actually working. This has been a lot. I hope you've enjoyed. Please feel free to leave a comment with questions. I know this was a little bit in more in depth than some of the other stuff we've done. Thank you so much for watching. I hope you have a great day. Take care.